As a fleet of British warships left Portsmouth for the Falkland Islands today, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher accepted the re resignation rather, of Foreign Secretary Lloyd Carrington and two of his top aides. She did not accept, however, the re res resignation of Defense Minister John Knott, who has also come under fire for the takeover by Argentinian troops of one of Britain's last remaining colonies. We have an updated report from ABC. It is the mightiest fighting force Britain has assembled for more than a quarter of a century. More than 30 ships on their way to the South Atlantic's Falkland Islands. This morning, final preparations were made, including the loading of huge amounts of ammunition and explosives. The flotilla is led by the aircraft carriers Invincible and Hermes, plus the amphibious assault ship Fearless. They will link with other warships now ending exercises off Gibraltar. As the task force sailed slowly out of Portsmouth, civilians stood and cheered their departure to erase a national humiliation more than 7,000 miles away. The Royal Air Force jet carrying civilians and soldiers expelled from the captured islands landed at an air base west of London at about the same time the assault force was leaving. The group included Governor Rex Hunt, who was welcomed by representatives of the Foreign Office, Mrs. Hunt, whose daughter rushed to greet her, and 80 Royal Marines dressed in sports clothes for the trip home. First on the agenda, the ousted governor and ranking Marines will report personally to Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Al Dale, ABC News, London. ABC's Nightline will again explore the worsening situation in the Falkland Islands immediately following our broadcast. Polish leader General Wojciech Jaruzelski spent the day in Czechoslovakia today in an effort to obtain more economic aid. The general ended his one-day visit on a high note when the Prague government agreed to increase economic aid to its beleaguered neighbor. It was Jaruzelski's third trip to an Eastern Bloc nation since he declared martial law in Poland last December. As in Moscow and East Germany, he stressed Poland's urgent cash problems, and Prague Radio reflected the government's immediate response with a broadcast reminding citizens of Polish help in 1968 when Czechoslovakian President Husak bade farewell to a happy Jaruzelski, whose delegation will stay on to work out the details of an increased aid program. Well, despite what you may read, see, or are told, the crime rate in Spokane for 1981 was the lowest in five years and police officials attribute this to an active crime prevention campaign. Anna Maria Bell has the story. Spokane's crime prevention unit has dipped from five to two employees in the last year, but it's managed to accomplish twice as much. That's partly because of the man who heads the unit. Officer John Moore has received international recognition for his efforts. His goal is to make the public more aware, and he spends much of his time sharing tips on crime prevention, like at this Rotary meeting. But Moore's efforts are more than tips. They're carefully structured programs. Three of them top the success list. One is the TV presentation Crime Stoppers, responsible for the apprehension of over 96 criminals. Another is the Block Watch program, in which neighborhoods are trained to keep an eye out for burglaries in their area. That program has reduced residential burglary 70 percent. Moore's Mock Robbery program received an international award. The program is designed to see how prepared banks are to unsuspected robberies. Uh, basically, we're going to be continuing the same types of educational efforts, but we're going to key on and spend the most time on the things that have perhaps the best track record or that work the best. Uh, so Moore says his philosophy is that we have to begin depending more upon ourselves and less on government. Law enforcement to a certain point have 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 uh, criteria, in other words, uh, they, ha they have responding to so many calls and the volume is such that, that they aren't handling the same types of things they did, let's say, 10 years ago. And I think historically in this country, in the United States today, that the public themselves, the property owners, uh, uh, they are the potential victims and they have to take more of an effort on their part to assist law enforcement. It's a two-way street. The police departments in our country cannot handle the problem alone. Moore will conduct a seminar on how to avoid burglary in your private business. That seminar will take place next month. We'll tell you more about that tomorrow night. Anna Maria Bell, News 4. This has been the late edition of News 4. Be sure to get all the latest news with News 4's Live at 5 and News 4 at 11. Good TV is everyone's business. Channel 4, a subscriber to the TV code of the National Association of Broadcasters, welcomes your comments and criticisms. Watch Channel 4, your television code station. KXLY-TV now concludes another day of telecasting in the public interest. We will return to the air again tomorrow morning.
KXLY TV is owned by Spokane Television Incorporated and operates on Channel 4 as authorized by the Federal Communications Commission. The KXLY TV studios are located at West 500 Boone Avenue in Spokane, Washington, with our transmitter located atop 6,000 foot Mount Spokane. And now, on behalf of the entire staff of KXLY TV, we bid you a very pleasant good night and good morning. <laughs>